In uh, this new episode of the IoT Show on Channel Line, we'll be talking about digital twins. Uh, we just announced a new past service called Azure Digital Twins, and Dennis Kappa is with me to tell you all about what it is and what we're offering. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the IoT Show here on Channel Line. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we're talking digital twins with Dan. Dan, welcome on the show. Thank you, it's great to be here. Well, Dan, first thing, you have to introduce yourself. Oh, sure. So who are you? What are you doing at Microsoft? Yeah. And then we'll talk about digital twins. Great. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here, so thank you, Olivier. Uh, my name is Daniel Escapa. I'm a uh, program manager on the Azure IoT team. I've been at Microsoft for 13 years, but uh, just joined the uh, IoT team about a year ago and super excited about it. Been working on uh, Azure Digital Twins, okay. a bit of a Skunk Works thing, and we just unveiled it at Ignite uh, in September of 2018. Cool. So there's a principle behind that. We're not doing things randomly, like people are asking for that, or mm -hmm. people need a solution or a service or something to sort out that question of like digital twins, managing, creating, modeling, and so forth. But let's start with what is a digital twin? What is that concept of, about? Of course, yeah, I think uh, it's been an industry term that's been around for a long time. Uh, even back in the day, NASA had physical twins. You know, you actually had a copy of the Apollo spaceship on Earth and they could debug issues. But more and more with software, how do we actually have a digital twin or representation in software? Okay. So a lot of IoT solutions, they were very device-centric and we had a bunch of great stuff to figure out how to communicate with devices, manage them. Mm -hmm. But the next level, a lot of customers had to organize those devices in the spatial relationship of the real world. What are the relationships between devices? Mm -hmm. How is this one sensor? different for the space it's in. So a lot of customers have this next generation of IoT where they need to model the world of those devices and that's the digital twin that we have with Azure Digital Twins. Okay, so model a device in context basically, right? That device exists because there is like building around it, other devices, there's people Exactly, well, yes. Right? A lot of digital twins don't take account for that. So if you yep. think about a building, if you want to do the heating and cooling, mm -hmm. the, the people are a key part of it. It's not just the devices and the thermostat, but it's their motion. Are people walking around? What are other indicators? Are you telling me that now when I'm going to hit on the thermostat in my open space to change temperature, it's going to actually change something? That's what we're trying to get with a lot of our customer <laughs> solutions. Looking forward to that. So that's the concept, digital twins, and, and we are addressing it. We did these, these announcements at Ignite. What exactly did we announce there? Yeah, so we announced a new platform. Uh, it's a new PaaS offering that we have in Azure. Okay. It's uh, Azure Digital Twins. It's a set of APIs and a way to model the physical world and have those relationships. So you have a, a graph. Mm -hmm. of people, places, and devices. Okay. And then as you have all those devices and spaces, they can be totally customized. So for us, we started with some commercial buildings because yep. that's where we work and we, we understand. Mm -hmm. But we've been working with customers for factories, for stadiums, and for larger projects. So okay. we, the whole graph is, is changeable. You can change the types of devices, the sensors, a temperature, if it's inside of a refrigerator versus if it's outdoor. All of those things can be fully customized. And we have okay. these twin object models. So you can customize it fully for whatever mm -hmm. solution mm -hmm. you may have. Additionally, we had a lot of customers where you know data comes in off the wire, but you want to transform it. So what is the computed value? Not just motion equals true in the yeah, room, yeah. but this room is occupied. So how do we help convert those things into your business uh, intelligence in your okay. own application? Okay. Uh, and finally, a lot of our customers are building solutions for others. You know, As a mm -hmm. platform offering, uh, we're looking to help others build their own SaaS offers. We want to be a platform layer. We don't want to compete in these spaces. We yeah. want to be the underlying layer to enable others to sell. Therefore, we have a full multi-tenancy model where you can sell to customer A, B, and C, and the data is segregated, and the information mm -hmm. and permissions are all part of that. Okay, makes sense. And I suppose because of the nature of that, that you can actually compose, you can actually grow. Once your, your model has been created, it's going to evolve, right? Because exactly. the space of building, for example, is going to change. It's going to evolve. You're going to change the HVAC system. You're going to change the location of these or that. People are moving around as well. Exactly. Right? So you're going to have that evolution is totally supported by the platform itself. Yes. A lot of customers had to do their own, uh, and they did it for one application or one okay. customer. But then another customer came along with a different domain, and they had to totally rework their solution. With Azure Digital Twins, we have a way mm -hmm. for you to be able to customize it and, and morph it for you as you handle different types of customers. Okay. Or even in a building, it might be the factory floor. But then you have the heating and cooling, and then you have an energy grid. All of that can be used by the same system. Makes sense. So that's becoming a bit more concrete for me right now. But um, one question I have for you is, how does it fit in the context of Azure IoT next to the other services using, leveraging them? Exactly. Where does it fit? Do you have like a diagram? Or something to show I, us? I, I do, yeah. So, well, I uh, knew you had because we were ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we, we really leverage a lot of the power of IoT Hub. 
You know, IoT okay. Hub is a core uh, way that we have to talk to devices, manage mm -hmm. them, and that's all there. With Azure Digital Twins, we build on top the ability to have the graph okay. and the relationships, a permissions model, and it's fully APIs and flexible to do everything therein. Additionally, uh, with the Azure Digital Twins, we can have multiple hubs. So if you okay. have a, many customers or many different geographic locations, you can actually spin up different hubs to segregate the data either regionally okay. or based on certain customer information. So you know, if we think about the normal portfolio of our offering, you have devices on the edge. You know, some of them yeah, talk yeah. directly to the cloud. Some of them will talk to Azure Digital Twins and IoT Hub. Some of them will go through our edge mm -hmm. modules and mm -hmm. our gateways. So how do you mm -hmm. convert the information? Maybe you have a camera. You don't want to send the video to the cloud. Yeah, you just yeah. want to count the number of people and send number yep. two to the cloud, both yep. from yep. privacy and from a bandwidth Makes constraint. So we have a bunch of edge modules to connect to the devices. Mm -hmm. All that comes up to the cloud. It all works through IoT Hub. And then the uh, Azure Digital Twins graph helps organize all mm -hmm. that information, transform it, uh, and I'll talk about how you actually can get the sensor values off the wire and convert yep. it to the proper uh, mechanisms. We have a real-time hot state of mm -hmm. the telemetry, mm -hmm. and then we egress out to various different mechanisms. You can choose whatever you would like mm -hmm. to egress to service bus, event hub, uh, event grid, uh, but a lot of us, we see people who are setting it to time series insights, mm -hmm. to TSI, okay. and then from that, you can actually take the two and build your own analytics model and have you know, space occupancy utilization or whatever is important for you. And then you build your own applications or experiences from a HoloLens experience to a data visualization yep. using all the other parts of the Azure fabric. Okay, yeah, so I hear all the names that I'm familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. IT mm -hmm. Hub yep. and Edge yep. and TSI, DPS as well. I guess there's going to be a story around the, the, the management of devices provisioning, exactly. right? You bring a new device mm -hmm. into your graph, into mm -hmm. your model, then boom, it has to populate into the IT Hub based on like leveraging DPS yes. and the automatic provisioning. And now DPS, yeah. you know, with Azure Digital Twins, you can actually set up certain uh, device configurations for those locations. Okay. So maybe you have devices in factory A, which is different than factory B, and how should they have their configuration and all that work together. Makes sense. So talking about factory A and B, mm -hmm. um, can you actually show us an example of what that, that graph would look like and so that people get a better idea and, and have an image of that, have a picture of it, right? Yeah, uh, no problem. The, uh, the way that we have is our graph is, is like this. It's mainly three main components. Mm -hmm. The spaces, which are the blue objects okay. there. Uh, the green objects, which are the sensors and devices. And finally, user objects, which are you know, optional that people can okay. put in there. The way the spaces are is that they're, you can have whatever depth you want. You can you know, put whatever customizations mm -hmm. and breadth. And what it does is it allows for you to have a hierarchy of the different devices and, and how they live together. So in this example, at the top root node, we had a, a, a tenant. And mm -hmm. maybe they're selling to Microsoft and a couple other customers. Yeah, yeah. So they can segregate the data. You can have all the different regions. Uh, but maybe you don't like the word venue. Maybe you prefer the word building, or you want to change it yeah. to edificio. You can do all of those things by fully customizing it right there in the graph, okay. and it can change. Same with the devices, what the sensor means or what it's measuring. You know, is that temperature mm -hmm. or refrigerator yeah, or, yeah. or an outdoor or indoor? You can make all those other uh, adjustments that you need okay. in the graph. Uh, there's some other good things that happen with the graph, too, where maybe you ask, what's the physical address of mm -hmm. this, this desk? Well, this desk doesn't have one, but if you keep going up to the parent building, you'll find the postal address. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, if you say that this desk is occupied, yeah. you can bubble up that, that you know, this room is occupied, and then that floor is occupied. So you can actually do mm -hmm. types of analytics with the graph. Okay. On that same graph, you can have full permissioning on it. So maybe I only have access to our building, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. I don't have access to the other buildings. Yep. And if you're selling to multiple customers, you could fully segregate you know, customer A yep. from customer B yep. uh, and have permissions in there. But maybe for your own organization, they have access to the various parts. Mm -hmm. So a full uh, RBAC, you know, role-based okay. access control for the whole hierarchy. Um, and the final thing that I think is really, really powerful with this is we talked about sensor values. I mentioned the temperature mm -hmm. and the sensor values. Yeah, yeah. A lot of customers, the, the data, you know, it says motion equals true or activity uh, is fired, but really what matters is the room is occupied. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we have a compute engine that lets you take the data and conform it to your own business logic. Maybe you have two motion detectors. You would OR function them. On a temperature yeah, yeah, in a yeah. room like this, you might average them. But in that refrigerator example, you might take the max value. Mm -hmm. And you can even have properties or thresholds on it in the, the graph itself, the metadata in the graph. Yep, so then yep. you can actually grab the data out, and you can see as the threshold's met, send out an event, send out a notification. And you can have your own logic app or dynamics or something else pick that up and perform okay. your own business workflow. 
I, I feel like you guys are actually doing what all the customers have been doing the last years, like on top of the of the row platforms that we've been building, right? Because there's nothing there. So we bought, we built the row platforms, connecting devices, authenticating, getting the messaging, structuring data for devices mm -hmm. with device mm -hmm. twins. Mm -hmm. And now we're actually going to that next level, as you were mentioning at the very beginning. That's becoming super concrete for, for sure. And uh, one more thing is customers have been doing that. Yes. Right? So, yes. so the, the question I have for you is, is how are we going to work with them for importing whatever model they have? Mm -hmm. You know, they have a way of modeling mm -hmm. their, their own digital twins today. Mm -hmm. We're working with partners in that. We've not invented all of that mm -hmm. like from scratch. Mm -hmm. we, so is there going to be a path for these customers to, to bridge their actual world of digital twins mm -hmm. into the Azure digital twin world? Yes, we've been really fortunate to have a lot of uh, private preview customers. We've had over 20 private preview customers who've been using mm -hmm. Azure Digital Twins. Um, and we've seen a variety of patterns emerge. Some yeah. people have an existing ERP or mm -hmm. dynamic system where they mm -hmm. feed this in. Some folks talk to a, a bill, BIM, it's like a building information management system. Okay. So they query all that and they can help populate mm -hmm. the graph. Uh, some customers actually use 3D models of buildings okay. and use that to generate the graph so they can have a, a representation. Nice. And then their okay. visualization layer uses the graph with all the real-time and metadata combined with their visualization layer. So there's a bunch of different mm -hmm. paths we have to go in. We're a platform, so a bunch of APIs to yeah, do it. Yeah. And we are looking for any commonality so that we can help customers mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. a tool. Um, but we don't have one single way quite yet. Okay. But we've had a lot of success where folks have been sending their data in. Getting there. Uh, that's awesome. Thanks, Dan. I think next time we're going to have like actual demos. Yes. Right? We're going to yes. have you back. Yes. We're going to show demos of the, all these various bits and pieces because we hopefully tease people there and they will want more. So we'll give them more, right? Our pleasure. Awesome. Thanks, Dan, for coming. Uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for the show.